Richard Dawkins is a familiar name in science. In a string of best-selling books, The Selfish Gene, The Blind Watchmaker, and recently, Climbing Mount Improbable, he has changed the way we think about evolution. This year, he became Oxford's first professor in the public understanding of science. And now, he wants to change the way we think about science. This is a very heavy ball. It's heavier than a real cannonball because it's made of solid lead. It's ten times as heavy as a human head. Now what I want you to do, stand back against this post, hold it against your nose, let go and then stand in the same place. And because of Newton's laws and the law of conservation of energy, you can guarantee that that ball will stop short of your nose and not hurt you. Now, are there any volunteers to do the experiment? Okay, I'll have to do it myself. The problem is that science is not a natural part of our lives. We should all know that there's no danger in that experiment. We should know the science that tells us so. But obviously not all of us do. So my purpose in this program is to show why science should become an integral part of all our lives. I hope to show you the dangers we face when we turn our back on science and embrace anti-science. <laughs> and the risks we run if we don't understand what science can do. But of course the message isn't all gloom and doom, far from it. Science can offer the highest form of joy. You'll meet three colleagues of mine who had that once-in-a-lifetime chance all scientists long for, of shouting Eureka. A good place for me to start is with the beginning of everything. There is still a lot we don't know about the origins of the universe, and we must keep investigating but a broad picture of the evolution of life has emerged which is no longer open to reasonable doubt. The world is about four and a half billion years old. Pretty soon, well within the first billion years or so, the first living cell arose. And from that we are all descended, all plants, all animals, all humans. That's an established fact, we're all cousins. Scientists accept it just as they accept that the world is round and not flat and it orbits the sun and not the other way around. Not to believe it would be absurd. And yet... A few months ago I went on a lecture tour of the United States. My subject was evolution. One stop was at Auburn, Alabama in the deep south of the country. I was outraged to find how many people there still believed in something science tells us is ridiculous. Well, I'm a Christian, so I believe in God and Jesus and that he created the earth. I believe you can see evolution in the world today, in nature today, in terms of how different species adapted to their environment. But as far as that being a means of how like one cell became a man, I don't believe that happened. God created man in his own image from um, that he created Adam from the dirt, and um, I believe that it happened just as the Bible says it. Before I reinforce too many prejudices about the Deep South Bible Belt, I should point out that beliefs on this issue are remarkably constant across the United States. For instance, anywhere you go, more than half the people you meet will believe Adam and Eve actually existed. Why have no new major groups of living things appeared in the fossil record for a long time? What's different here, though, is that this nonsense is official. Last November, the Alabama Board of Education decided that every biology textbook should carry a sticker, the Alabama insert, challenging the theory of evolution. The move was supported by State Governor Fob James. And then a thousand years later, they come up to here. <laughs> His pantomiming of evolution is now a local legend. If one wanted to understand something about the origin of human life that uh, you might ought to look at Genesis and you can get the whole story, period.
Here are just a couple of extracts from the insert that Governor James inspired. The first sentence refers to evolution as a controversial theory some scientists present as a scientific explanation for the origin of living things and tells us any statement about life's origins should be considered theory not fact well as you might expect I couldn't let this pass unchallenged Thank you very much indeed. And what I thought I would do, uh, with your permission, is to depart from... So in my lecture to the beleaguered university at Auburn, I threw away my prepared speech and set about the Alabama insert, line by line. <laughs> this textbook discusses evolution, a controversial theory some scientists present as a scientific explanation for the origin of living things such as plants, animals and humans. This is sneaky and dishonest. <laughs> Some scientists, controversial, suggests the existence of a substantial number of respectable scientists who do not accept evolution. In fact, the proportion of qualified scientists who do not accept evolution is tiny. And that holds for this one. It may have been fun for me to get laughs from an enlightened audience, but for Alabama's biology teachers, this insert is no laughing matter. Gene is a sequence of nucleotides in a molecule of... Dr. John Franson is head of biology at nearby Tuskegee University. More than half his students don't believe in evolution. are made of DNA and protein. And now he has the insert to contend with as well. For many of these people, when it comes to teaching evolution, the well has been poisoned. These are going to be their last, in many cases, their last science courses. And then these kids are going to go on, and they're going to become the politicians. They're going to become the leaders of industry. They're going to be the movers and shakers in society. I don't believe that uh, man come from apes. That or he could have evolved from an ape. I just don't believe that. I like the idea much better that I came from Adam and Eve versus coming from an ape. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the bottom line. I agree. <laughs> but don't let's get too smug about the foibles of our American cousins. We're not so smart ourselves when it comes to knowing the scientific basics. Professor John Durant at Imperial College in London has made a study of British attitudes to science and his last big survey revealed some big gaps. Only about a third of our sample knew that antibiotics, one of the most important classes of drugs, don't kill viruses, they only kill uh, bacteria. Uh, only about a third knew the Earth goes round the sun once a year. Uh, and less than half, actually, uh, in 1988 were able to say that DNA uh, is a substance that has to do with living things. And those, I think, are quite surprising and perhaps quite eye-opening to scientists. I find this lack of scientific understanding 